Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady, where we share stories about folks that are mistaken for employees by irate customers. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, drunk Karen and ignorant Carl give me problems. The second story, clients called my number, thinking it was a company's number. The third story, woman was kicked out of the store because she harassed customers. Today's first story is, Drunk Raging Karen Gets DWI and How I Got Banned from Menards. I've actually got two stories, one Raging Karen and one Ignorant Carl that just happened the other day. About me and my wife, important. I'm not that tall or muscular, 5'10", 175, but I do have a deep commanding drawl. I'm also a cabinet maker with 30 plus years of experience and a general jack of all trades, including electrical second year apprentice before I decided it was not for me. Wife is six years older than me, not a big woman but not skinny either, really friendly and outgoing, and worked retail for many many years. This story is from my wife's work, she has a lot of retail stories, circa 2007 so can't remember exact details but it's pretty close. DRK is drunk raging Karen, IC is innocent customer, wife is wife, SO is store owner, so in our area, stores aren't allowed to sell alcohol before 11 a.m. SO keeps the beer cooler locked and the liquor section roped off till then. It's Sunday about 9.30 a.m. In staggers DRK and heads towards the beer cooler. My wife is stocking chips one aisle over from the cooler. IC is getting a few things and has a basket in hand. Employees wear gray slacks, white polos and a dark blue vest with store's name on the front and back. IC has on a dress. Anyways, DRK gets up to the beer cooler and tries to open it. She starts tugging and cursing and yells at IC. Hey you, open this up. IC looks at her bewildered. Uh, I. DRK gets in IC's face. Are you deaf? I said, open it up. By this time, wife has gone to see what's going on and turns the corner just in time to see DRK push IC and scream at the top of her lungs. Open the effing cooler. I swear to God if I have to tell you one more. Wife firmly says, she doesn't work here, but I do and you just assaulted a customer. I think it's best if you leave the store. SO had also come back to see what was going on and was getting close to them. DRK looks at IC, mutters sorry, looks at wife and says, well then you better open the cooler or else I'll... SO turns the corner and says, or else you'll what? DRK looks at him and shrieks. Wife said her voice went up two octaves. I know the owner and I'll have you all fired. Now open this cooler now. SO calmly looks at her. You know the store owner? DRK. Yes, I do. And you are so fired unless you open this up now. SO's slightly ticked off by now. First off, we can't open it till 11 by law. Second, I don't know you and I am the owner. DRK. You aren't the owner. Open this cooler now. I'm leaving till I... SO motions to wife. Call the police. Wife and IC head to front of store. Wife calls police and checks out IC. DRK is still carrying on telling SO he isn't the owner screaming about the cooler, kicking the cooler, etc. Minutes later, police arrive, proceed to escort her out of the store and arrest her for DWI, as well as disturbing the peace and a bunch of other charges. Three days later, DRK, sober this time, enters the store. SO greets her halfway down the aisle and tells her to leave. She's no longer welcome there. DRK gets pee and starts arguing and gets police called on her again. Wife says she never saw her again after that. Story 2, circa 2020, just last week. Place, Menards, me equals me, IC equals ignorant Carl, E1 equals employee number one, Jason, my friend, E2 equals employee number two, SM equals store manager. Menards employees generally wear khakis, collared shirts, and blue vests with Menards printed on them. My outfit that day consisted of torn jeans, ratty steel toe shoes, and stained gray t-shirt. No way I could be confused with an employee, plus I was pushing a cart. So I'm talking with E1, who manages electrical. I'm telling him about my plans for burying the water and power lines for our new house. A customer comes up and asks E1 about something and he leaves me to my business. QIC. Hey you, where do you keep the spool wire? My back was to him, although I glanced back towards him. It didn't register he was talking to me. I see. Hey, D-head, I'm talking to you. I turned around and saw him five feet away, mask around neck, looking at me. You talking to me? I see scoffs. You see anyone else around here? and slowly, purposefully pronouncing every syllable like, you would a three-year-old, where do you keep the spool wire? Uh, I don't work. 
You don't know, you don't know, what the F good are you? Typical Menards employee, dumber than SH. It took me a second or two for what he was saying to sink in. I was frozen like a deer in headlights. Did he just call me dumber than SH? He then grabbed my arm and started, are you stupid or what? I snapped out of it, wrenched my arm from his grasp, and raised my voice a bit. When I raise my voice, it gets deeper and meaner. Firstly, I don't work here. Second, you need to learn some manners. Thirdly, Menards doesn't sell wire by the spool except special order, and if you touch me again, I'll break your hand. I could see it in his eyes. The way I talked and the way I said it startled him, and at that point it clicked to him my dress, my cart, my demeanor, that I wasn't an employee. Uh-oh, sorry, I thought you worked here. At that point, E2 walked into the aisle and asks if either of us needed help. I see still being his ignorant self. Finally, maybe someone who actually knows something. I see points at me. This guy says you don't have spool wire, that I have to special order it. Is that true? And how effing long will that take? E2. Well, most wire sold by the spool is special order, but we do have a few types of aluminum wire in stock. I see his eyes lit up like he won the jackpot at bingo. I need a spool of 4 gauge copper, do you have that? E2, walking over to computer. Let me check. I see looking at me like he just beat me in checkers. Special order my A. E2, walking back, says, No, we don't have 4 gauge in copper, but we have 2 gauge in aluminum. I see. I don't want 2 gauge, I want 4 gauge. It's thicker, and I need thicker. At this point, it dawned on me that this guy was an idiot. Anyone who's dealt with wiring knows that the lower the number, the heavier the wire, and the more current it can carry. Me. Uh, no. 4 gauge is not thicker than 2 gauge. I see. Shut up. I didn't ask you. You don't know nothing. You don't work here. And poked his finger into my chest. Reflexes kicked in and I grabbed his finger and bent it back and growled, I warned you. Touch me again, I break it. He screams and I let go. No broken finger, maybe in a bit of pain though. E1 comes rushing down the aisle. I see is now screaming. How he's gonna sue me and the store. E2 gets out his radio and calls for the SM. I'm seriously peeved off at this point. I was having a great day till this prick showed up. E1 is talking to me, trying to get me to calm down. E2 is trying to comfort IC. SM enters scene, and IC starts lying about how I just grabbed his finger for no reason and broke it. E2 says that's not exactly what happened, and proceeds to explain to SM everything he saw. SM turns to both of us and says, Well, I'm not going to call the police, but I'd like you both to leave the store and not come back. I was absolutely peeved at this point, so I decided to get the last word in with IC. You, sir, the one who's dumber than SH. I'm a second year electrical apprentice. The lower the number, the thicker the wire, the more current it can carry. You probably have never wired SH in your entire life. You just like being an ignorant A hat, Carl. The next story is Sorry, wrong number. My first year of college, I lived in a dorm. It sucked a lot. And so when my friend Paula asked me if I'd like to go in on an apartment with her and her incredibly cute friend Heather, I said heck yes. We each took a utility. Paula had the gas bill. Heather had electric, and I had the phone. I bought a telephone and an answering machine at Lechmere, and we recorded a cutesy outgoing message. Within minutes we had our first call, a guy looking for Abby Auto Rental. I told him he had the wrong number and hung up. He called back immediately. Abby Auto Rental? Nope, me again. What number are you trying to reach? He read off my new phone number. I said, well, that's the number here, but this is a private residence. He said, well, I guess you're effed, because there's a half-page ad for Abbey Auto Rental in the yellow pages with that number. Lots of luck. I grabbed the yellow pages and flipped to the car rental section. Sure enough, it was our number. I guess they had gone out of business fairly recently, for the ad to still be included in the phone book. So we changed our cutesy outgoing message to say, sorry, this is not Abbey Auto Rental. They're out of business. You've reached Dave, Paula, and Heather. Please leave a message. It made no difference whatsoever. People kept leaving messages for Abbey Auto Rental. At the end of the year, Paula and Heather moved out, and Dan and Jorma moved in. Jorma used to enjoy messing with the callers. He would take down their credit card number and make a reservation, promising free delivery, just as it said in the ad. Then he would go off to class. When the reservation time rolled around, the customer would call back, furious at the absence of their rental car, and frequently I would be the one to answer the phone. Dave, hello? Irate customer, where the heck's my car? Dave, sorry, Abbey Auto Rental went out of business two years ago. Irate customer, what are you talking about? I gave my credit card number to someone this morning. Dave, you must have been talking to the ghost of Mr. Abby. Whoa! Irate customer, I'm coming down there to kick your A. Dave, okay, see you soon. You have the address from the ad, right? How are you going to get here with no car? Irate customer, rah! When Jorma moved out and Michelle moved in, we decided it was time to change the outgoing message again. We left longer and longer messages, but the calls kept coming. 
They had phone books. The phone books were three years old. Abbey Auto Rental must exist. It must. Finally, I went out and bought a longer tape for the outgoing message. I recorded the gift by the Velvet Underground. This song is 8 minutes and 16 seconds long. The left channel is the band noodling around aimlessly on their guitars, and the right channel is a male voice with a British accent, telling a story about a man who mailed himself to his girlfriend. We told all our friends to just hit the star key to bypass the outgoing message. This finally eliminated the car rental messages. I left the answering machine that way and tried to forget about it. Almost a year later I came home to a light blinking on the machine. It was the peevish voice of a little old lady, who had clearly listened to the entire story. The message said, That's a very nice story, but it doesn't help me. I want to rent a car. The last story is, Ski moms are worse than soccer moms. I'm at a very large warehouse of a ski shop getting my boots fitted. This involves some measuring and work to stretch and shape the boot to your foot, so it takes about 30 to 40 minutes. I had been measured and was roaming around the giant racks of gear, waiting and looking at all the shiny expensive SH I didn't need. I'm snapping a friend so I stop and look down. When I look back up, an older, maybe 50 PTA all-star of a woman is directly in my path, complete with a local middle school track team t-shirt. She asks, I can't find the right helmet, my son needs one. I'm a male with long hair. I'm wearing a bucket hat with a weed leaf pen and a ski brand t-shirt. I get how there might be some confusion, and she wasn't rude at all. Uh, I'm sorry, I actually don't work here. PTA. Really? I knew it. Me. Now feeling awkward. Oh? PTA. That you were too busy playing on that phone to help me, and now you're lying to a regular customer just to avoid your responsibility. Um, forget it. I'm finding your manager. No, I really don't work here. While a bit annoyed, I still just wanted the situation to be over, and save both of us and the store the trouble. You're wearing a ski brand shirt. They only give those to employees. Not true. Wear the XL helmets. I get a little snarky. Nah, I'm just chilling. Good luck finding them. Awkwardly get my phone back out and try to act cool. She paces around, literally huffing, composing her next thought. I bought him a board, jacket, pants, everything here. More than you make in a month. And you treat me like this and lie to me? It's up to your manager if you keep this job, but I'm telling him I'm not coming back if you do. PTA leaves towards the front checkout area. I decide to seek Haven back in the boot fitting area across the store. I sit down in a comfy waiting chair, find out 15 more minutes until my boots are done, and hope it's all over. I'm near a gruff older man doing ski repair, so I figure I might be safe. Nope. There he is, sitting on his A instead of helping me. Why'd you even hire someone so useless? She had dragged a manager from the front around until she found me. He doesn't work here. He's a customer. Sorry about that, the manager says sheepishly. He could have found you and fixed this whole mess. I want him removed. The manager says nothing and looks like a deer in the headlights, then asks if I'd apologize to her, since that's what PTA told him she wanted when she came to him about the lazy, rude guy refusing to help her. I reply, no thanks, I'm good. I don't know her SH. I'm a semi-regular customer too, and I know my boots on their own are probably worth more than her son's starter board and jacket, whatever else she bought. I'm peeved enough now to roll the dice. Service guy knows this too, yanks the manager aside and whispers something. Meek manager asks her to come with him to the back office to sort it out. She glares, but probably hopes she's about to help file some report on me, and finally they're gone. Turns out service guy is actually one of the owners, and knows her for causing SH, but buying something every time she's there to ingratiate herself. After this, he'll ask her not to come back, since harassing customers is a new level. Get my boots back, don't see PTA again, and end up getting some free swag for putting up with her. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.